profession, passion or fashion? What is photography? DSLR is the new thing in. Every second person here is a photographer. Is it the frugality of technology or is it the love for capturing moments? Whatever it is, we will find out today. In this edition of Young World, photography is under focus and we have with us some young photographers. So, welcome to Young World. Thank you. Thank you. Now, guys, I would like to start today's show from asking you all, basically, what is photography? Let's start from you. Okay. Photography is um, art of capturing moments, preserving them and showcasing them for uh, cause based. It can be cause based or you can be a professional photographer earning from it. Okay. So, three things that you've mentioned. One, you can make money out of it. Yeah. Secondly, you can do it for a cause. And third, mainly because you want to capture moments. What is your definition of photography, sir? Uh, photography, is, uh, as he said, is about capturing moments. It's all about you and about your passion, that what you want to capture. Some people want to capture landscapes. Some people want to have portraits. Some people do it professionally. But it, should, it, al it always has some objectivity to it. Mm -hmm. Now, I am uh, actually not a photographer. And that was also one reason for doing this show, that I want to be educated about it. So w what are the different forms of photography, ma'am? Uh, photography is an art and it has various forms. Broadly, if we categorize it, it can be divided into um, landscapes, uh, portrait photography, it can we, can, we also have macro street photography. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there can be uh, land, uh, you know, the architecture photography. We also capture old ruins of places, so that yeah. is also another form of photography. Now, all three of you are actually, in some way, professional photographers, yeah. while you, on the other hand, uh, you're just a hobbyist. So, w how do you define then photography? Well, photography for me is an art, and it's my passion. I just like to capture moments, and I wouldn't do it for a living, but um, I enjoy exhibiting my work on my blog and my page. Okay. And, you know, um, uh, discussing with fellow photographers, I mean, you know, uh, t learning about techniques. And I, I enjoy doing photography of random stuff. Uh, <coughs> but then, once again, I have a question. You being a hobbyist, you being professionals, I think both are connected uh, with passion. A hobbyist uh, would do photography only if she or he is passionate, while a professional would only do good photography if he or she is passionate about it. So. Uh, what about you guys? Is it passion for or the love for photography that has brought you into this business? Of, of course, uh, it was my love for photography. I wanted to capture the moments. I wanted to uh, represent Pakistan through my photographs to show the world that Pakistan is more beautiful than they think. And uh, especially, uh, if how we can you represent Pakistan with mere photos? Well, uh, we can uh, capture its landscapes. We can capture its uh, wildlife. Uh -huh. We can uh, exhibit them on blogs, on websites. Th this is interesting. Tell me more about it. What have you been doing? And what was the response of the world? Because now with social media, you know, one picture can, can be something to show to the whole world. So what was the response? And tell me about your personal experiences. Okay. Um, almost in September, uh, this is website. It was organizing worldwide events for photographers. Mm -hmm. So I took part in it and I said that I want to do it from Pakistan. Okay. So the guy contacted me, we, we chatted, we Skyped and we talked more and more about it. Then uh, as you know, we have this uh, terrorism and other things in Pakistan. So he wanted to know more about Pakistan. Right. Uh, yeah. So he searched Pakistan on his website and he was impressed that Pakistan is so much beautiful that people sometimes misplace, mis misinterpret Pakistan. the whole thing. Yeah, mis misinterpret, they think like Pakistan, uh, like other Asian countries, maybe uh, has lots of deserts or mm. uh, is not that beautiful okay. be because of a government Simply lack of awareness of the natural beauties this country has to exactly. offer. Right. So he was quite overwhelmed by the. He was and it was your work that actually impressed him. Uh, it was a uh, collective work. Many other mm. photographers who also uh, photograph and put their photos. So it was. But he was impressed. Quite impressed. Okay. Uh, what about your personal experiences? You were telling me you also cover events and stuff. Yes. So that's more of the. Uh, money making side is it it is it is but of course it all obviously so the charm still passion. remains there while you're making um, money sometimes it wears me out because you know clients demand a lot mm. but again it's only the love of photography that keeps me going because otherwise so what happens back there you know, tell them that i should look beautiful things like that 
<laughs> especially when you do the human photography. Yes, yes. They, um, women especially, <laughs> they are more keen very on... Very conscious, huh? <laughs> yes. They, they, they're very keen on looking good and all. But of course, they uh, all of them realize that it's... Uh, see, there's another thing that I'm doing is um, there's this thing called mystery photography. Mystery uh, photography. Yeah, yeah. So Intriguing. in that, what in is that, that you don't reveal the person that you're actually photographing, okay. but you you photograph them through either shadows or um, you know behind oh. the cloth cool. type of thing. Yeah. So so uh, this is a new trend here, and I don't know if a lot of photographers are doing it, but um, uh, the clients have been very very responsive. And then what happened? Like the p the person is never revealed. Throughout the whole album? No. It's, it's mere shadows? Yes, it is. Wow, it's just a reflection. Huh? Yes. Interesting. And what's your thing? Uh, basically, I am a social worker and I have been doing this for four years. Okay. Uh, I came upon photography uh, by the thing that with the appearance of the social media, you have to show what project you are working on and how to represent it. Photography is a very good medium to express moment the ideas, the story behind all the social work. We have been working with the education sector. So there's a lot of children involved and their smiles are very photogenic. So dads also uh, uh, flamed the passion in me to capture those moments, the people when uh, they are happy and all. Uh, the thing is, it is very good for the cause-based cause. Mm. Photography is a new medium for the cause. You don't have to write long blogs or long, long reports for that. You just take a photo upload it on the social media or any other website with a small caption and the people get the whole thing that what is going to happen. The whole nar narrative is basically built around that. Basically, it, it is time saving for the people. Everyone is busy. People don't have time to read the whole stories. They just want to catch the idea. If it is catchy, they would go deeper into True. that. So it is an opportunity. And there's, there's also a popular saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. Exactly. But then here, uh, Everybody is a photographer. Whoever carries a camera, even in a smartphone, w what is this phenomena? What, what's this whole fad about? A hobbyist should answer that. Well, though I'm a hobbyist, I'd agree to you. I mean, it's like every other person who has a camera or a DSLR, um, to be specific, calls themselves a photographer. A photographer. And they do it professionally. Um, although I would call myself an amateur, and you know, I would not like to compete with uh, my fellows here at all because uh, I mean I don't think that I qualify or have the qualities No, but what are the characteristics of those pictures which are actually worth a thousand words? Well, uh, that is you know I think no, Don't you think you need to learn all those techniques to actually reach a level where your pictures start to talk? Yes. So you agree to that? I do agree. You guys had some uh, basic formal training? I um, I have had. You're being watched by your clients. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but I I've had uh, some training. I've been attending a few workshops. Okay. But more than that, uh, it's just personal experience. And the more you experience it, the more you practice it. But what the about more you learn. that? Uh, you know, light stuff. Because I've heard that lighting is very important it with reference to camera. And then your angles, and you know, aperture and all that. So anybody would like to give that technical insight. Thank you. Of course, um, lightning is very much important for photography because lighting, right. <laughs> <laughs> lighting is not <laughs> lightning is not <laughs> all right. Okay, because there are many ways you can uh, light a photograph. Uh, you can have abstract light or you can have natural light, and then uh, you can have uh, your own made light, like the three light setup, or you can set up different ways to light your subject, especially in case of uh, portraits or product photography. So you have to be uh, very much uh, neat and clean about light so that its shadows don't fall or how much you have to bring out more details. So, so do you think that those people who do not know all these basic techniques, they can also be uh, photographers? Because I mainly ca carrying a camera in your hand, I think that does not make you a photographer, does it? Basically, there are two sides of photography. One is passionate photography, one is professional photography. When you, come okay, into profession, when you come into professional photography, it's not only about the subject, it's about the whole thing. You have to satisfy the other person. When it's passion, it's the subject that matters. Mm -hmm. That when you're doing street photography, it's not the thing, what is your framing, what is your light. If you are uh, capturing pakoras, mm -hmm. a person making it in mm -hmm. an open market, the subject matters that you are capturing something which you like. 
and which you want to show to your peers or, you, or to your friends. But when it comes to professional photography, you have to know the technical details like any professional should know. So, so what about a passionate photographer? Huh? Sometimes it's only about uh, capturing moments. Okay. It, it does not matter that if you know it's angled perfectly or if the light balance is perfect or not. That can be fixed by Photoshop. You know, there's been I mean great advancement in uh, that technology. Okay. But uh, the thing is that sometimes you know you, people just want to see emotions in a picture. Just like you said, a picture speaks a thousand words. Hmm. So if you're doing it with uh, passion, right? Then uh, I do believe that um, uh, people who are hobbyists uh, they get more lucky when they uh, I mean in capturing. Good, huh? Yeah. Moments. I think another thing is that um, since photography is an art. It can be uh, received from everybody in a different way. Some picture that I don't like, you may like it really well. It may be appreciated by the masses. But it's just a perspective. So okay. everybody can be a good photographer. So building perspective and changing perspectives. You were telling me about uh, this, this website where they capture people. And what was the whole story? Share yeah, with my audience. There recently was a, a trend by... Um, um, this person in New York and he uh, started a page in 2010, November 2010 uh, called Humans of New York and uh, this went viral through social media, Facebook and uh, through his blog and recently in October um, uh, 2013, this year, he j just uh, released his book and he sold over 30,000 copies already. So it was about the concept was that he would uh, go up to the streets of New York every day and he would uh, start um, taking pictures of strangers. And he would upload them on his blog and his page with a caption, um, you know, describing that person's life. So that captured a lot of interest and it, uh, I mean, mm. you know, just like I said, it went viral. There were a lot more pages popping up. Throughout the world, throughout the globe, there were like pages uh, like humans in Tehran, even humans of Karachi, humans of Islamabad and Rawalpindi, and there's recently okay. another page that's called uh, Cats in Lumps. That is Cats kind of hilarious, <laughs> but you know, it's got it's caught a lot of you know attention. Oh. So probably uh, these pictures are now becoming the reflection, rather the definition of a particular social segment. Yeah. Exactly. How how can photography do it? Any any other examples? You were also sharing one. Uh, photography. We, have, we are going through a lot of terrorizing ventures in Pakistan, mm -hmm. like in, you can say bomb blast and all this. And tourism has come very down uh, in the last 10 years okay. because tourists are not allowed. That Pakistan is a dangerous country. By photography, Don't tell my mother I'm in Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> By photography, you, you can show the softer side that there are people who still are happy about it. You can capture the good moments, you're capturing the good events like on Eid and on other festivals, you can capture the landscape. Oh, people are already doing it. There's a fact people are already doing it, but this is not a collective effort. We can provide platform. I, uh, we started a project uh, three years back by the name of Pakyagraphy, and we would collect all the pictures regarding Pakistan and its people and its culture, and we will upload it for the competition and for the general public as well. It catches some interest, but it it's need more fueling from the people and from the general public to endorse mm. such con concepts. And probably a picture doesn't even take much time. If it appears on the wall of your uh, Facebook, Yes. Uh, you will simply look at it. If it's a video, you have to click the play button. If it's an article, you have to take the time out to read. But if it's a picture, everything is evident at the spur of the moment. Okay, and probably when you talk of uh, projecting an image of country or projecting an image of a culture, then uh, profession and passion both uh, these these uh, yeah. kinds of photographers, they both can chip in. The, have you ever done something to change the image uh, or to present an image of, of this country? Yes, well, I do a lot of landscape photography. It, it's uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing. Okay. I mean, and um, uh, in it, I have tried to capture different um, areas of Pakistan I visited, which people haven't seen. Mm. So that uh, gained a lot of attention because um, people even from Pakistan started asking me which place is this um, we haven't been there so oh. you know it, it sort of you know builds a soft image and you know if people from abroad they see this I mean these pictures like they say Pakistan is like uh, uh, is, is like a heaven so um, I think photography can help a lot with tourism perfect there now we talked about um, image building now let's talk about money making you know, how can your camera be a source of earning for you? Special, let's, let's start from you. You're making money out of this, right? Yeah. 
<clears throat> yes, I am. How, how can youngsters want to follow your footsteps, uh, actually follow your footsteps? Uh, well, first of all, I think they need to be technically trained. Okay. Because a lot of uh, youngsters, I, I, am, I myself consider myself an amateur photographer because I still have to learn a lot. Okay. But uh, um, a lot of new entrants in the photography field, they consider themselves professional and they start charging for it, which sort of saturates the mar market in a way that uh, the quality may not be up to the par, but they're still charging the clients. And uh, sometimes they don't satisfy the clients to the to their utmost level. So, uh, but other than that, I think photography can be a very good way of earning because uh, people are, people don't have the technical knowledge generally. Uh, n the people who don't ha own a camera, they don't have a technical knowledge and they want somebody to perfectly capture the moments, for example, on a wedding or uh, for that matter, in any conference uh, or a concert. So that kind of complete package of photography a photographer can provide and they're, they're willing to pay for it. You're mostly referring to covering events. Yes. <coughs> well, that's, I that's would agree to Aruj what she said about saturation because I recently had my sister's wedding and we had a really tough time deciding which photographer to get uh, to cover the wedding because you know such special events they you know it's like uh, they just I mean it's a very big moment of your life and you True. don't want anything going wrong. So um, we I mean since Every, every, other, uh, every other person has their own, I mean, I mean, they're selling their uh, product. Their own ideas. And their services, yeah. yeah. So um, they're charging for the services. We could not uh, decide which one to get. Um, so I really think that um, there should be a qualification uh, or an eligibility for people who uh, okay. should be, you know. So while, while you're able to take these decisions, let us take a short break and we'll be back after this break. Welcome back from the break. Uh, before going on the break, uh, photography was under discussion in this edition of Young World. Uh, guys, before we left for the break, I was asking you how can you make money from your cameras and she explained pretty well that the way she actually utilizes this to earn the money. What about you guys? Um, well, when uh, it's about me, uh, I mostly do stock photography. I put my photos on websites. First of all, I need Okay, yeah. you need to explain us what is stock photography. Okay, stock photography uh, is uh, you you put your photos online on websites and uh, they sell it for you. So those websites are called actually stock photography websites because they have stocks of different photographers' photos which uh, they sell to other people. Uh, it can be bought many times. Uh, one photo can be bought many times and can be used uh, depending on uh, what type of lessons I am giving to my photo. Okay. Like we have different types of photos, uh, how it can be used. So, I mean, you simply snap a picture, yeah, put it on the internet, and it's being sold again yeah, and again. Like every time somebody downloads that, you get the, you get some uh, amount yeah. of profit out of that. Yeah, that's an excellent business. Yeah, exactly. So, is, is there anything more to it? Is uh, to, the, to the concept of the stock photography. Yeah, it and, is. And and what sort of uh, photographs um, do sell? Uh, on such sites? Well, it can be uh, any sort of uh, photograph uh, okay. because as we have already tell that, uh, told before uh, <coughs> sorry no problem okay yeah as we have already uh, told that uh, photography is art so uh, art is to me art is different to someone else art is different so I was amazed that the very first photo w which was sold uh, it was of just a door uh, I went to Qatar and uh, I, uh, I photographed at Qatar's uh, ruins okay. uh, it was as old Hindu civilization uh, there was Sikh civilization living right. there so it was one of the door there so I was uh, not really thinking that it will be uh, one of my best seller in, in fact it was my first photo that mm. was sold so what do you think is it the product itself you are actually um, getting the picture mm -hmm. of or is it the quality of picture is it the light is it the angle what is uh, that characteristic that actually results in selling of a photograph? Well, it, it depends uh, what buyer is looking for in most of the cases, what I think, what okay. is my experience actually. Because uh, as I've explained, uh, my very first photo that was sold was of a historic door. I, I in fact uh, uh, captioned it as a historic door and the buyer was uh, a sick person. 
he was sick okay. by religion probably so obviously yeah, that it religious was it, it was religious him. and uh, mm. something of its culture which has to do but other than that uh, you can sell abstract you can sell portraits depends on what buy is looking for but like again so uh, the best sellers or depends uh, it so can be any picture this is great business i mean even if you're doing some other job you can simply you know uh, satiate your urge your hunger for photography and then make money why don't you do that huh well um i don't really think i'm good enough um to uh, oh, come on. No, I re I really don't think so. I I uh, would uh, classify myself as an am amateur photographer, and uh, I really uh, feel that people who are experienced enough should uh, pursue it as uh, you as know. As a career. Yeah. Probably, but but uh, we'll come on to that later. Uh, how? What's what's your uh, mechanism of making money from photography? Uh, basically, we are not in. Uh, I am not into the photography for money making. We are actually working for a cause based thing. Okay. But it indirectly uh, gives uh, hype to the uh, tourism. We go to the places okay. which are tourist resorts or historical places or shrines or have cultural or traditional value. Uh, but people can't go there because they uh, either don't know about them or know about the facilities they can so avail. So we are basically there. just creating awareness. We are just creating awareness okay. for the tourism industry. Excellent. We are indirectly connecting the photographers, which are like uh, important part uh, of it's a profession which covers tourism. Okay. And people ready to it want to go to see new places. People coming from abroad want to go to see. Do you have any places. interesting incident for us where somebody saw your photo and then? came as a tourist to this country well yes when you post photos they ask about it where it lies in pakistan right. when they are like planning their trips okay. uh, to pakistan uh, if if not the foreigners pakistani is abroad they follow your pages we, because the uh, pics we take and the photographers which go with us they upload it on the social media uh -huh. every photographer has a fan following or a customer base or relatives abroad they they see the photos they want to go see that place indirectly it is good for the tourism and also it gives a soft image of pakistan of the people it highlights the people living in those area tourism if tourism expands in pakistan it also gives business to the people who True. are related to its industry so, so basically it's a collective effort but at the end of the day it's that photograph that is pulling the tourist to come and visit our Actually, country if uh, we take photography as a medium it's just not Obviously. A, it's just but that is the attraction yes, that's, that's, that's the attraction that's the thing okay um now you said it's art and now we've also linked business to it so an art that produces business uh, it also faces some issues like copyright infringement so do you guys get to face that where your watermarks are removed off your pictures and somebody else uh, is using those yes it happens Sh share those instances um although i'm an amateur okay, photographer one for us. um one of the leading newspapers actually stole one of my pictures and they cropped my watermark out of it really and when i claimed that this is my picture they wouldn't agree and um all my friends knew and you know we just you know let it go but they never uh, paid me for that for my work you guys need to pay her <laughs> really <laughs> pay her <laughs> and they never even accepted or you know g gave me the credits for the photo and probably if you would have if they would have paid you you could have done uh, much more for them well huh? yes of course you would be motivated i would have been but i was really discouraged that's a cheap shot <laughs> okay yeah what's uh, your take on this it happened with me too uh, it was a shot uh, my photograph of uh, faisal masjid it was decorated for uh, in the year 2011 every year it is decorated it was 27th okay. of uh, ramzan Okay. so i went up to the munal and uh, i take a picture of it and it was uh, copied by some of the facebook pages uh -huh. uh, yeah there were did, two did you put pages. a watermark on it obviously i put a watermark on it and uh, then then i contacted them and uh, i asked them to remove but uh, one of the page admin removed it instantly but other was uh, quite uh, quite keen to keep it and uh, he was <laughs> but that's quite on on their part what about you especially you know if you're covering events and doing that and people are using your photos your photographs to actually market their own business because i I've, i've been seeing this i got friends who are photographers and who do weddings and stuff so other young photographers they take on to their pictures and show them to their clients that this is our expertise and skill and they get business on behalf of my friends yeah i think i think it's actually um something related to their own esteem maybe they're not mm. so confident about their work which is why they do it 
also um, if I consider myself an artist I know the value of the work I produce and I know how much hard work it takes to for me to produce that level of work I would never copy another artist's work for just for the matter that I know how much hard work it takes okay. but yes I've had issues like that but uh, I've been lucky alhamdulillah that whenever I've contacted people um, you know about this copyright infringement they've either you know put up my um, they've given me credit for it okay. or they've removed the picture so I've been lucky in that case. So you've been with good people. Yeah. Uh, coming on to the lighter side, the, there's this something known as paparazzi. Uh, I want you guys, being photographers, to explain to my audience and to me that what is it and what happens around it. Okay, uh, I don't think it is a lighter side. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, for those who are a victim of this, <laughs> oh, yeah. while for the others it is. Yeah. Though in Pakistan, a Papa Rajji is not uh, um, such, or food journalism is not popular. done, uh, yeah, it is not so popular. But if we look at uh, abroad in Europe or uh, Especially USA, India, our neighbors. Yeah, uh, India. It's the too. most popular business. So, uh, <laughs> they have like ruined piracy of many people, many famous people, they have ruined their privacy. Um, there are many instances. The, that uh, they have uh, not only uh, <coughs> basically what happens you in know? Pakistan actually the there are not many paparazzis but uh, leaking people's personal pictures that's, no, that's what, separate story. what's more famous here but but then let's explain to people what paparazzi is it's basically yeah. snapping somebody's picture without letting that person yeah. know and capturing him or her in a very awkward situation <laughs> for that matter. It is more like breaking someone's mm. privacy without Including their consent. Intrusion yeah, of privacy. Intrusion of privacy without their consent. Uh, paparazzi started uh, in 18th century in it okay. Italy. Uh, it is actually Italian word, paparazzi. Yep. So uh, the word, uh, there were seven photographers. What they did was uh, to get more attention, <coughs> they tried to harass uh, the celebrities or the famous people, public f figure people. And uh, so for the sake of uh, more uh, attention and uh, to maybe uh, they can uh, blackmail them or like they, such they have such intentions later it grew and uh, more people followed that trend what they used to do was they try to um, maybe abuse someone or try to, to exploit to take, yeah, exploitation ex exploit the, them so that they can create a scene or some in which they can photograph to sell themselves uh, so this was what uh, paparazzi started from there okay. was a group of seven photographers which actually started doing that. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, there are instances when uh, you can see the many famous uh, celebrities throwing cameras or they are trying to shut them up, shut the photographers. Uh, there's basically paparazzi behind everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you think? What, what are your comments about paparazzi? Uh, I, think, I think for uh, Pakistan, we don't have that much of an issue for paparazzi. I think the basic concept is just to uh, get in the line, the photographer to get but in the limelight. Photography is now actually grounding its roots in this country. Yes. And especially with uh, smartphones, you know, people are turning into photographers. So, who knows, you know, this thing will be fusing into our society as well. Of course, of well. course it can. So but let's I talk about it before it happens. <laughs> Uh, but I and think, for example, it. in Islamabad, Islamabad is a r very small city, mm -hmm. and the celebrities here in Islamabad, um, almost everybody knows them in one way or the mm -hmm. other. So there's no specific need of paparazzi here because mm -hmm. we already know the celebrities here. Yeah. We are they're accessible in that way. So maybe uh, maybe Islamabad seeing the boom Islamabad of paparazzi. Safe zone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> paparazzi free zone. There is okay. more of scandalous photography in Pakistan yeah. than you can put it in the paparazzi category uh, because sure. people don't go into the celebrity thing, they just go into the like but, universities, but cafes. Come on, political celebrities are very popular here in Pakistan. In Pakistan yes. politicians and, uh, are the most effe affected you know, by inclusion paparazzi. Inclusion in their privacy, privacy has been well, happening. A lot of, we won't be talking yeah. about that. But incidences have been happening. We have been uh, watching pictures which we shouldn't have actually. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, pe people, people want actually. It is the uh, that you want to more know more about the person you follow. Like uh, in Pakistan, politicians are followed more than the celebrities. So people want to know more about them. They want to see more of them. They want to see more of their private life. That how okay. they how do they live their lives, etc. etc. So if you can put it in the paparazzi category, it comes in the paparazzi category. But people more go into the funny things. Oh, obviously. And the hum uh, humor part is the there. humor part is very important uh, for us. No. A lot of marketing that is done anywhere in the world, uh, there's a very important role of uh, still photography in it because a product shoot has more impact 
uh, than a video being made because it's yeah. the product shoot that ultimately goes on to the billboards and also to their pamphlets and flyers and their booklets. So now I want to talk about that. You being the marketing girl, you know, do, do you think this is also one side which can uh, fascinate uh, young photographers to opt for this business as a career? Well, I would not advise amateur photographers to go for uh, product photography because mm -hmm. it requires a lot of techniques and, you know, you're not actually, I mean, you know, it does not require that much of uh, moment capturing, uh, I mean, because uh, it's more focused on props. So um, I think uh, people who are more experienced and professional should uh, go for it, you know, in instead of um, ruining the person's business. Okay, so a bit of advice from her. <laughs> well, what do you think? Um, well, I'm not uh, so good into product photography because I, it is not my domain. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I will totally agree that uh, it needs to be professional because you have to bring out the best thing of that product. Yeah, but don't you, don't you think there's, there's much more earning perspective to it? Uh, because obviously when you, when you do the product shoot, you work with multinationals. You shoot for them. Exactly. And uh, uh, you can obviously even be hired by them in, in this domain. But uh, again, when it comes to product photography, uh, as we are speaking about amateur photographers or the professionals, so obviously, uh, if there is a multinational brand or some international this brand... This is obviously for the professionals. Obviously, how can an amateur do product photo shoot? Obviously. So, um, but, but, but this field exists and now it is growing it is. in this country. Yeah, it is yep. and it is growing. Uh, it exists definitely and it's been on a rise for quite some time and interestingly a lot of amateur photographers are interested in product photography and I think especially for girls uh, mm. it's even better because event shoots take a lot of time and mm, you know true. there's the time limitation they uh, the girls feel a little little restricted because of that so product photography maybe suits them more but a lot of time and effort needs to be invested so mm. you bring out the best for your client. So another suitable career for the women of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. There is a mushroom growth in the online retailers in Pakistan lately that they are selling things online. Yes, that, adding that, to that, e-commerce, that, whole that, business that lies That's a very big field and opportunity for the professional photographer as well as amateur photographers. Because the thing is happening that the websites can't hire professionals mm. because they it's want hi higher pays. But the same thing, because the things are not uh, that complex and they are not putting in the background, they just want to get a higher resolution, high detailed picture with a white, ba white background. So they just hire the amateurs or the hobbyists or their friends. We've been that's, continuously that's talking about expertise, expertise, expertise. I don't think we really have much of institutes where people are taught photography. But then uh, with the advent of the internet and with the availability of the tutorials online, don't you guys think uh, that uh, if people utilize that resource, one can become if not professional, close to a professional photographer and later on, you know, learn on job. Uh, you should answer this. Well, I think uh, there were a lot of opportunities to learn from YouTube, but since it's been blocked, so um, okay. we've lost Another that opportunity. Another YouTube block complaint <laughs> yeah, on Young um, uh, There were a lot of tutorials on how okay. to operate a camera and use a DSLR and the lighting techniques. You can <laughs> learn a lot. Apart from that, in Islamabad, we have a lot of photography workshops by different uh, organizations. Uh, I mean, one of them is Kushkhas and Minerva. Hmm. And uh, they uh, uh, teach you uh, really well on a very reasonable fee. So I guess uh, there's a lot of opportunity. Talking of workshops, you have been on workshops. So do you think uh, workshops are good enough? to make you a professional? I think, uh, see, first of all, um, just my point of view, I think a professional is a person who is paid for the work. So a lot of people are being paid, but they may not know the technicalities of the work that well. For a workshop, I think it um, teaches you the basics, but again, after that, you need to experience and practice yourself because you cannot just learn um, all the aspects of photography in one day, if it's a one-day course, for example. Okay. But there are week-long courses as well, and um, they, I know teachers, I know I have mentors who actually take you out to the field, they teach you, and then they take you out to the field to practice it. Okay. So that way you learn a so lot more. You basically learned by, by these, these mentors actually taught you. Uh, yes, mentors, online resources, and of course, and then my own personal practice. Personal experiments. Yes. What about you? Okay, uh, as uh, I am a graduate of Media Mass Communication, so oh. it is also part of my uh, study. And uh, I, in my very first internship, I was taught the basic uh, working of RDSLR and uh, all other high-end cameras. Okay. Later on, uh, I improved on the YouTube. There were many, many great tutorials. Yeah. So the more you photograph, the more tutorials 
I I watched and it was more learning. So, but, so, you, so do you think that the resources available online are ample to take you to the level where no, you can be called a professional? No, they are not ample, but they are good enough to at least uh, get you uh, move you away from uh, move you up to uh, the at least help you improve yeah, to, upon your to semi pro level. You okay. can go to at least semi pro level, but again, a mentorship or a proper uh, education is very much needed. Okay. If we talk about uh, capital city, uh, not all universities are offering photographic courses, mm -hmm. uh, even in the media and communication studies or media sciences. Yeah, but they are not offering courses, but there are a lot of events that are happening, and rather you will shed some light over that. Uh, uh, actually, a lot of photography events and competitions take place. They used to happen in my university as well. Uh, well, uh, just like every profession, it has a learning curve. But as it is art, you. So some people have in them that they take good pictures, they have good framing, they have good sense for it. Naturally. But you still you have to learn. You have to go to the experts, you have to take the advice, you have to take the suggestions. The online resources are good enough for the starters that they give to the basic technicalities and the workshops give you the live exposure that you go into the field, you talk with the experts. But one thing is practice. Photography demands a lot of practice. And for that, you need a lot of passion. Uh, you need a lot and time as well. It is a very time, time consuming time as well. passion. All right, uh, one more dimension now, which <coughs> is uh, photojournalism. Uh, we've been, f till now, we've only been talking about business and photography for fun. But then, photojournalism, that's something very serious. And um, you can contribute a lot to the society, especially to the media world, to the news world. Um, what are your beliefs about that? Okay, uh, photojournalism, uh, it is quite easy now to do photojournalism as uh, you can just uh, go to your Twitter or uh, Instagram you are attending some event or you are you have seen something happen in front of you you took a picture and uh, you put it online in fact uh, Michael Jackson's death and then Whitney Houston's death mm. it those two were actually uh, broke from Twitter both of them along it, with the pictures yeah along with the pictures okay yeah uh, she was found uh, when Whitney Houston was found dead in her hotel room uh, it was one of the waitress uh, who snapped the picture. Yeah, who snapped the picture, uh, and uh, she put it on her Twitter account. But again, uh, it also uh, is very much responsibility thing because uh, mm. if you don't know what exactly is happening, then you are spreading something wrong. You, uh, some wrong information can be said, and that can be totally disaster. But then, you know, photojournalism does not really require the sort of uh, techniques we were referring to. Exactly. exactly. The purpose is only to snap a picture at the right time. Yeah. You know, capture the event at the spur of the moment. Uh, don't don't you think that uh, in near future this will formally be structured and probably this would be uh, the fastest and mo uh, most um, accepted source of uh, news or journalism? I think it is with the need connecting this with social media as well. I think it is the need of the hour. Uh, we it, it's such a progressive uh, technology. We, we're going so fast, we need photojournalism because <coughs> everybody needs to contribute their share to the news. But again, uh, a lot needs to be verified and everyone who's contributing as a photojournalist needs to have a sense of social responsibility, ethics and morals. Because other, otherwise, uh, you know, intrude, intruding in someone's life or, you know, doing something <coughs> which is, uh, telling a news which is not maybe the right way to tell it, uh, it will create a lot of problems as well. So okay. it needs to be handled I would like carefully. to uh, add one sure. more thing, uh, that is many uh, news organizations have stopped their um, reporters to break stories on Twitter. First they want to, because it is a race, uh, yeah, they want to Whoever break stories story first, first you know. but uh, now as uh, the more it is progressed, we can see that uh, Twitter handles of uh, almost every news organization True. and uh, they are first breaking their stories on Twitter and then they are uh, now going on screen. That is they not a second option. Test the response. Huh? Yeah. And if it catches the response only, then we lit the screen. Probably. Uh, have have this photojournalist ever entrusted you? Well, yes, I do contribute to my Twitter account. Very they, frequently. they just steal your pictures. <laughs> 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 Those are without a watermark. I don't really care. Okay. But uh, the thing is that um, I, I feel that a lot of people are uh, uh, contributing to photojournalism, but the problem here is reliability. Mm. You can't really trust the source because every other person takes a picture and puts it on Twitter but and then Facebook. then it's a picture. The picture itself depicts whatever has been happening. 
well, but still. There is no authenticity issue. It's not uh, written data. It's a picture. I there, don't. Uh, there, I, there are still issues to, with reliability. There are issues. Yes. I, I love think issues. I, I will have to okay. disagree with that because okay. see, when you take a picture, there, there's perspective of a picture. True. You might not be taking I the so whole scene in account. I so wanted you to say that. <laughs> yeah. So. So obviously, people can misconstrue. Yes. Yes. But so of course, where if there should be <clears> verification, and it is a person's own own responsibility to you know be socially responsible and not. You know, portray a negative image you of anything. In, please. I would highlight one thing. Photogenesis has contributed a lot for the development sector. If we don't just focus on Pakistan, if we take it in globally, African issues and the, uh, the Syrian revolution has has been covered very vividly by photogenism. By photogenism. Exactly mm. the the 9/11 issue back in 2001. It was the like it has significant part. Of photojournalism in it, people just took photos from their mobiles, and after that, m many events has been covered this way. It is not a formal way of news reporting, but still, it gives the public opinion. It gives them a chance to say what they see. I think it's a good thing. It should be uh, progress. It should not be uh, filtered because it has. It, it is not made to be filtered. It is not a formal way of you can expression. Okay, then. So it was wonderful having you. Uh, all you photographers and all you want to be photographers <laughs> on the show uh, let us conclude this uh, photography is something which is uh, in these days and uh, the implications which you have shared uh, i think uh, this this can be a very good profession for for the people who are interested in it so on that note let us conclude today's program uh, keep on buying dslrs but do learn the techniques they have all said that you need to be professionally sound to use it so take care, keep on sharing good pictures. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.